Hey guys, we're going to look at a whole bunch of functions today and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 functions that we're going to go through. Now some of them are pretty cool and very, very useful and you're definitely going to be using some of these. Some of them are just nice to know and you might be able to find a use for them, okay, but it's good to know about them. So we're going to, these are date and time functions and, uh, and or match index. You're going to see in a minute what that actually means. So here, yeah, let's begin with week num. The week num function, I'll just read this to you. I know you can read, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Takes a date and returns a week number that corresponds to the week of the year. So for example, here we have a date and this is the, what is that? The 12th of January, 2021. And that is the third week of the year. Okay, how did I work that out? Well, I used the week num function. Okay, the number, it says serial number. The number is the date. Okay, now the return type. When you're doing this, you'll notice when you do the return type, it's asking you which day of the week in your country does is the first day of the week. Which day is it? A Sunday? Is it a Monday? Okay, so you can decide which one it is. So we just do the Sunday. So that's why we use that argument over there. And there you go. So if I change the date to that, let's do, uh, you know, the 5th of March. The 5th of March, 2021. That is the 10th week of the year. So that's what week num does. Okay. Let's look at work day. Work day takes a date and returns the nearest working day in the future or past based on an offset value that you provide. So let me give you an example. Here we have the 28th of February 2021. 28th of February 2021. And I use the workday function. The start date is B4. So that's the beginning date. Okay, the 28th of February. And I want to work out 10 working days, 10 working days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we don't count Saturdays or Sundays. 10 working days, but it's minus 10, so it's before. So 10 working days before this date, and that gives me the 15th of February. This is actually very useful. I mean, if you're working with employees and salaries or wages or things like that, and you want to work out or calculate something based on just working days, the workday function is actually very handy. Network days, right? Network days, actually pretty handy. Calculates the number of working days. Remember, working days, Monday to Friday, between two dates. So look here, I have the 1st of January here and the 1st of April here. 1st of January, 1st of April. Let's look at how I worked out 65 working days. Network days. The start date is B4, which is the 1st of January. The end date is C4, and that's the 4th, oh, sorry, the 1st of April. All right. There's also, you can include holidays, and uh, if it's built into the system, you can tell it how many holidays or which holidays to use, but I'm not going to get into that right now. We'll just use basic for now. Okay, that's network days, the number of working days between two dates. That's Monday to Friday. Year frac. Year frac. Okay, I know it sounds weird. Okay, it's fraction, all right? Year fraction. So, what does it do? All right, the year frac function calculates a decimal number representing the fraction of a year between two dates. So, you have a start date, an end date, and that tells you what out of the year, what fraction is that out of the year? It's actually quite handy, and I chose an easy one so you could see that it's working. All right, so the first of January, there it is there, the 1st of July, okay, so we use the year frac function, the start date is the 1st of January, the end date is the 7th, 1st of July, not 7th of July, 1st of July, okay, and that is 0 0.5, that's half a year, it's 6 months, 6 months out of 12 is 50%, it's 50%, it's half, that's your fraction, 0 0.5 of a year. That's what the year frac function does. Actually, pretty cool. E date. The e date is not a new online dating service. Okay. This one returns a date on the same day of the month, so many months in the past or the future. Right. So, for example, if I choose a day here, so I've got Friday, the 1st of January, 2021. The 1st of January was a Friday in 2021. And I want to work out what is going to be in two months' time the same. The same date in two months time. What day is that going to be? 
all right? So two months from now, what day is it going to be? That's what the e-date function does. Have a look here, e-date, the start date, there it is there, and the number of months. How many months? Two months. Two months from now, two months from the 1st of January, it will be Monday the 1st of March. Let's say like six months, if you say, right, so Friday the 1st of January, six months later, gives me Thursday the 1st of July. That is exactly six months later. That's quite handy. All right, and it can go backwards or forwards, past or future. The choose function. Now, this is an interesting one. I'm going to show you what it does and how it works, and then you can sort of see, okay, where could we use something like this? There are some applications. Choose returns a value from a list using a given position or index. Okay, returns a value from a list given a position using a given position or index. Let me explain what that means. So here you can see I have a list of uh, colors, all right, from five down to 14. I've got all these colors. So that orange is the first item in my list. That's the second item, that's the third item, all, all good so far. Now, I'm going to use a function called choose, and I'm gonna click over here to show you what it looks like. So equals choose, and I'm giving it the number three. I want you to choose the third item in this list. Now you'll see here, I had to go and select every single cell, each value in my list, one after the other. I had to give Excel this list. All right, I can't choose a range. So I can't go choose the third value in this range. I can't do that. That's what index matches for. But uh, this is how choose works, all right? So that was the first one, equals choose. Choose the third item, index number. Out of these items, I want the third. I change it up a little bit by doing this, okay? Here I have a list, again, the same list as before. Here I have a number, and here I have the choose function, and instead of typing in the number, I'm using a cell reference instead. Okay, so have a look. So I've got purple over here, and that is one, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth item in this list. And do you see what I did here? I said choose, and the index number is E5. Just move you out of the way, E5. And whatever number I type in there now, it'll then choose that position in the list. But remember now, I've got to, do you see here, I had to give this function every single item in the list. So there are some uses, but it's not great for large, large number sets, okay. Ah, and, and is a very, very interesting function. Let me tell you what it does. A logical function used to require more than one condition at the same time. Now, when you have two things that are the same or, or two tests and they both need to be a, the same, okay, or true, that's an AND function. That's what the AND does. For example, here in cell A4 and A5, I have two numbers. I've got 51 and 55. In this cell, I've got a function that says, all right, if A4, all right, is greater than 50 and A5, sorry, greater than or equal to 50, and A5 is greater than or equal to 50, so and, so both of these must be true. Both of these arguments, so A4 must be greater than or equal to 50 and A5 must be greater than or equal to 50, then it's going to return true. There it is there. So you will often use this in another function, such as a if or nested ifs. Okay, this is where you would use this. You wouldn't really use this on its own. Uh, I mean, you could if you're going to be referencing true and false figures and then using that for another function. Absolutely, you can do that as well. But that's what it does. It says true. Here you can see same one, okay? Same one. So A7 greater than or equal to 50. A8 greater than or equal to 50. The and means they must both be true. Then it will say true. So at the moment, A7 is greater than or equal to 50, but A8 is not. It's not. So that's why it's false, because only one of these is true. So if only one of these is true, then it's not going to work. Okay. If I change that, I mean, if I change that to 60, it becomes true, because that's greater than or equal to 50. That is greater than or equal to 50. 
Okay, and that's what the and is asking for. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, I hope I haven't spent too much time on that or too little time. Or is pretty much like and, but only one of the arguments you supply have to be true. Not like and, where all the arguments given have to be true. Or means any one of these. If any one of these are true, let's do something. So have a look here. I got 51 in here, 47 in there. Let's have a look at my function. So equals or a4 is greater than or equal to 50 or a5 is greater than or equal to 50. Any one of these two. If any one of these two are true, it returns true because at least one of these is over 50. All right, and I actually use an if statement for this. I'll show you that in a second. I actually use an if statement to generate this text. Here's another one. Oh, if statement one. So let me just show you the if statement then. So here I use an if statement and you can see that I made it rely on the true or false here. And underneath that, I'll show you how I put the or inside the if statement. Like I spoke about and and or, they could also be inside the if statement. I'm going to show you now. So let's see. Uh, if b4, b4 is false, okay, then we write there neither over 50, otherwise at least one is over 50. And there you go. So if I go and change that to 40, they neither are over 50. If I change it to 55, at least one is over 50. And that's because of the or. Okay, one of these is true, and that's great. It meets the, the criteria. Let's have a look at what I did here. So here you can see now, before you start panicking and like you like heavy breathing and like, <gasps> oh no. If you have a look here, you can see so here you can see I've got if, all right, if, now remember how the if statement goes, okay, if the logical test, okay, and if that logical test is true, we tell it what to do if it's true, otherwise we tell it what to do if it is false. So here is my logical test, and my logical test is based on an or function. So if a7 is greater than or equal to 50, or a8 is greater than or equal to 50, there's my or. There it is there. Cool. So if any one of these two are equal, greater than or equal to 50, then we're going to write there at least one is over 50. Otherwise, it's not true. It's going to be false. And neither are over 50. That's pretty cool. Hey, that is pretty cool. So let's check. So I'm going to make that like 54. At least one is over 50. Okay. And that's what my or is doing. I love it. I love or. Ooh, match an index. These are <laughs> these are my favorites. You're gonna love these guys. You're gonna love these. So the match function used to locate the position of a lookup value of a value that we're looking up in a row, column, or table. Right. So let's have a look. Here I have a list of months of the year. There they are. There. Okay. And I want to find out the position of one of these months. So January, February, March. So let's say, for example, I'm going to look up July. There is July. Okay. And in terms of my list, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is the seventh item or it's in the seventh position in my list. So let's look at how this match works. It's actually very easy. Have a look. So match i equals match what am i looking up i'm looking up the word july okay so i'm looking up c5 and in c5 i've written the word july where am i looking where's my lookup array okay where's my table or where is the data there it is there from a5 all the way down to a16 great and then the match type this is actually quite important because i'll show you what what options we have right we have one, zero, minus one. One is anything less than or close enough. Zero is an exact match. That's what we're looking for, an exact match. Or minus one is something that's greater than, like closer, but it's above it. This is more for numbers, okay. But for letters or for strings or text, we want an exact match. So that's why we do zero. Okay, so there we go. There it is there. So if I go and change this, I just made this a drop down list. Okay, date of validation drop down. I just changed this just so we could kind of run through it. So if I choose January, location should be one. All right, January, location one. It is in position number one. Right, now you might be thinking, okay, now, I mean, what am I going to do with this? I mean, why? What am I going to use this for? Okay, you will see soon enough. 
All right, you've done XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, okay? Index matches part of that family. All right, I'm gonna show you what index does. The index function, so the index function returns the value at a given position in a range or array. So whereas match looked up a value that we asked it to look up and told us its position, okay, in that list, index returns the value. So we give the position and it gives us the value. So it's kind of like the other way around. So let's have a look at what I mean. So here you can see I've got a list here, okay, January to December again. And I've got, uh, you know, everyone has a position, first position second, third, fourth, right. So I want to know using an index function, if I look over here, index the array, okay, there it is there, A5 to A16, so I, I tell it right here is my array and I want to know what is in row number one. What is in row number one? That's what index does, it looks up row numbers. So in row number one is the word January. Cool. How about the second one? Look, equals index A5 to A16. Same thing. There's my array. Row number two. What is row number two in my array? The second row is February. And there it is there. And that's what index does. So when you get into slightly more complicated activities, which I will provide in a, a couple more vi a video or two from now, with some activities for you, you're probably going to want to use index and match for that. So... Make sure you practice this one.